Ready Check Radio. Good evening, Internet. It's Thursday. It's 7 p.m. Eastern. That means it's time for the Relic Grind, our Final Fantasy XIV Square Enix podcast. We've got 14 news from 6.4 launching this week. We got 16 news from other places. We've got the PlayStation Showcase showing off a little bit of Square Enix love, including Final Fantasy 16, and a ton more to talk about. I'm your host, Mike Byrne, a.k.a. Magic Man, like always, and this is episode 104. If you're watching Ooh. on YouTube or listening on Audible, Spotify, iTunes, wherever, we appreciate it. Thank you so much. Give it a thumbs up, a like, a subscribe, turn on notifications, and let us know in the comments about your opinion. If you need directions to any of those, Check out the website, readycheckradio.com. All the socials and the backlog of this show and Gaming Gumbo are all there for you. Chat joining us live, ready to chime in on their opinions with Mr. Chris Montoya, a.k.a. Tarkov. What's up, sir? I'm a little disappointed. Uh, greetings, programs. I'm a little disappointed because, you know, this show is interrupting my island sanctuary time, but it's fine. You know, I'll, I'll deal with it. Um, but do you like foam? Well, do I like don't foam? know. We'll find do out. you like foam? <laughs> we'll find out. Also on the line, Mr. Paul Berlin, a.k.a. Flynn. What's up? Hey, I am so tired. I have done so much crafting in two days. Yeah, you sent me your Excel list. <laughs> you uh, oh, make, oh, yeah. Let's just say so, you are making a few ingots. You are making a few uh, ingots. I think the total was 780 individual crafts over two days. To make Oof. eight sets of gear. That's a lot of gear. Yeah. That's a lot of gear. Well, 6.4 is here, finally. We've had about a day and a half, two, depending on when you were able to jump into it, because we still got the North American server crap going on. I don't. Are you guys impacted by that? Well, I mean, not Flynn, you're overseas, but um, Tark, have you been disconnected, booted from servers, all that fun stuff lately? Uh, I had a little bit of a hiccup when I was doing my normal raids uh, on Tuesday, but I haven't seen any issues since, so. Yeah, mine was pretty good, except Flynn and I were talking behind the scenes, and I was in the middle of doing the uh, the story dungeon in 6.4, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. And mm -hmm. I was doing it with, with the trust system, and so luckily, like, I wasn't pissing anybody off, because I would get Octomammoth down to, like, 12 10%, and disconnect from server. Oh, I'd, I'd reconnect, <laughs> and I at least it kept me in the instance, right? And everything was clear. Yeah. I just have to run to the boss, start it over, and it did that three times in a row. Wow, three times in a row. It had no issues before it, and no issues after it. It was like the worst possible time for it to have done it to me. I'm like, ugh. This fight's dragging because I've had to do it four times. <laughs> <laughs> was trying to get his names worth out of you. That's what it was. <laughs> yeah, but 6.4 is here. So, of course, gents, let's kind of give our review. Um, not really, you know, keep it spoiler-ish free. Uh, there, I, I wouldn't say there's too many spoilers. If you've been watching this show, there's already a name in particular that even Yoshi P has teased that we've brought up on this show. Uh, and, and may they may or may not appear, who knows, in, in the story. <laughs> but if you've played Final Fantasy IV at all, you're fully expecting this name to show up uh, at some point. Uh, other than that, I, I think it was relatively, like, not too many spoilers. There, there was some nice emotional stuff, though. What would you think of the MSQ before we get into, like, the dungeons and the, the Golbez fight and everything like that? What do you think about the MSQ this time around, Tark? Did it deliver? Because the last few maybe was like, okay, yeah, I mean, it's pretty straight line. Not a lot, to, not a lot of stuff to do. Sure. Not a lot of sure. story development. What would you think of 6-4's MSQ? Well, I haven't been as down on as you and, and previously Kronos, you know, on the MSQ. Um, I've enjoyed it, but I, I even tweeted this. I, I think this whole patch has been the best of the post release, uh, you know, point X series. It's, it was great. The MSQ I felt was great. It's got some good humorous beats, uh, emotional. Um, there was a moment where I actually like yelled out, no. <laughs> At the same time, a character was yelling out, no. I was like, no! So I, I thought it was great. And I'm a big Final Fantasy IV fan, so I got all the nostalgia. I was like, oh, so good. Thank you. 
Yeah, I mean, this entire patch is geared towards you in particular yeah, yeah. as four being your favorite there. What about you, Flynn? Your take on the MSQ itself? And since you, you've joined us recently, maybe your take on the MSQ post 6.0 Endwalker ending, kind of the whole dot one through dot four. This has been my favorite uh, post Endwalker patch so far. I don't know if that's just from them teasing future content, though. But it made me extremely hungry, made me laugh, made me <laughs> go, what the hell? And I think I'm too in tune with my Warrior of Light now that I can predict where my character nods. Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, every time I was going to nod, I would nod in advance and type it. But yeah, really enjoy the patch. Uh, this feels closer to a combination that we was missing in 6.3. Uh, Started to feel that ramp up now. Yeah, I got to agree. Oh. Uh, I really, really enjoyed 6.4. Uh, I, Tark, I'm, I'm with you and Flynn with you on different reasons. Like, there were emotional beats. Zero has some very, very continued nice character development in 6.4. Yeah, she does. <laughs> she has some amazing character development. Uh, we get to see a, a sweaty, shirtless Estinian. Uh, you know, I called that. You really went all out with sweat I, physics. I called that out when I, we were knocking on the door, and he went, "What?" And I'm like, "Oh, he's working out. He's, he's working sure. out. Let's yeah, he's working out." Uh, and you know what? I think you know the there's the the number of people shipping Zero and Estinian exponentially increased after this patch. Let's just say, uh, no. absolutely exponentially increased. Nope. You don't. You're not down for that. No, that, I, and I, tw right I tweeted this too. There is a moment after the dungeon was done where it's just the Warrior of Light and Zero, and it's just them in the frame, and they're looking at each other. I'm like, there, right there. I screenshotted that. I tweeted that. I'm like, this is the moment I need to ship these two. Me and my, and my bae. Let's go. No, no. The Warrior of Light has no romantic relationships and and to be te I mean Whatever. To be technical zero is a void scent right so like no emotions oh. whatsoever but maybe, maybe I mean there are a wry smile or two in the MSQ here that maybe get you thinking about and the way I love the way she stares at Astinium by the way He's like, yeah. should we disrobe? Yeah. <laughs> should we disrobe too? <laughs> it, was this, an, it, was, it was an innocence. It's like newborn babe kind of thing. Like, it's like, yeah. is, that, is this what we're supposed to do? Is this what's is, normal here? We should disrobe? Yeah. Right. <laughs> but there's Go only ahead, really one character this patch that was uh, Loki. Uh, horny boy is the only way I can politely say it. Our little uh, Galena friend of ours having to go back home. Probably in a Vulcan. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit. <laughs> a little bit. I love how subtle it is. You need to know the male Vera law to understand. Oh, that's why he's going home. Yep, that's why. That's why. I gotta, uh, I gotta okay, go. Okay, I missed I, that. Yeah, I got. I gotta go. I can't. I can't be here right now. It's time, baby. It's time. Yep. Yeah. He's so, the seven-year Vulcan. <laughs> uh, and there are kind of to to your point, Flynn, about setting up for the future. Uh, and not just six five, but seven zero, right? I think yes. one. I think there's one or two things that happen or are said that are kind of offbeat moments that I think are direct nods to seven zero in yeah, particular. I believe two scenes. Yeah, I, I got I got two in, I know in, one in, of in them. my mind too. What? Which one do you know? I know the Thancred and Urian J one. Uh, the one and before the that is the, the letter one... with Kryl. Yeah, with Kryl. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah okay. Yes. Yes. Thank you. I remember yeah, that. there's somebody that needs some archons, and that's all we got. Like, yeah. so we're not we're not spoiling blind. anything. It's literally three lines of dialogue in like two different conversations. So we'll have to see where it goes. But somebody has need of some archons, and given our status, even though we're technically disbanded, we uh, as the Scions of the Seventh Dawn and the Warrior of Light might fit the bill. Apparently, maybe. Might Maybe. introduce some new archons to us as well. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, it's I, I really enjoyed the the story patch and the zero development continues to go. I'm glad they didn't go down the road we thought that they might with zero. Um at, at least it seems not to be the case. Uh, and so we can kind of continue to see the zero development. That does Tark kind of push me though, like, okay, if zero is not Zeromus. Mm -hmm. Then 
where does zero end up at the end of all of this? That kind of started coming to uh, mind was like, so does, you know, what we do in six, five, you know, cause there are references to freeing of souls of void sense when you kill sure. them and re and reclaiming your own, uh, knowledge or identity or, 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 you know, your soul for lack of a better word. Uh, or does she stay with us in the source? Like, where do they go with zero? Kind of gets a little more interesting after you've done six four, and you say, "Oh, okay, they're not going to pull the old switcheroo, and zero becomes a Romus type deal." Yeah, I, I'm glad they didn't go that route because um, you, you were building her up too much to then pivot her to be a villain or an adversary. So I'm glad they didn't go that route, um, and I think it would have been convoluted no matter what is happening um, for her to go that route. Um, I don't, I think she stays on the source with us. She made mention um, that, she, you know, she's going back to the 13th with us, but she'll be back as soon as possible. Like, I think she likes and appreciates where she's at. I don't think she has any inclination to stay on the 13th. I think she's with us uh, until they kill her off, uh, uh, AKA Moonbrita style. So I'm glad. You agree, Flynn? You kind of like nod in there and putting the eyebrows. Oh, I totally so, said Moon Brito was like, that's what I'm expecting to happen next you think, match. Yeah, yeah you I think, think that's that's what like a, it up. Do it. Like <laughs> a sacrifice that, type play. Yeah, especially with that scene when she attacks uh, yeah. this entity. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah, she's got to put an entire being into that to, uh, to free one but trap the other. Yeah, it's mm. gonna be it's gonna be interesting where they they go there to Cal saying when she's gonna develop to not tip the cap every second. Yeah, I felt I do I got to agree there. I feel like that emote was a little overused in six four. Maybe a little bit. So Maybe like a little bit. Stop nodding. <laughs> it's little a little bit. Little like, yeah, bit. that's quickly like... the program. We'll just press that button. <laughs> Up oh, cap tip. Up. Oh. Cap yeah. tip. Up oh, another cap tip. Hey, uh, what did you spice the curry with, Flynn? Uh red powder. Red powder. What about you, Tark? Uh, the black peppercorn. Okay, so I was red powder too, which means Flynn and I saw the same scene. What happened to all your patrons when they tried your curry? Because uh, I, I don't know. I haven't. Over, I haven't I, peeked. It, I didn't look at any of them. Is it the uh, same scene for everybody? No matter scene. what you pick. I think it might be the same scene. Oh, yeah. I, I, that's so disappointing. Stream. Hot fire. This. Yeah, but just. That's disappointing. That's disappointing. it felt very Hildebrand uh, scene. Yeah, I it felt did. like, that hey, this is a perfect did, yes. little scene to have like just three little slightly different dialogues the same, but the reaction in the background could be different. And, I, and they've done that before. So I was like, when I made my choice and they show that cut scene, I'm like, well, that totally makes sense for what I, I picked because the red pepper was supposed to be extremely hot and all that jazz. And I then, think your uh, first dialogue choice change will be in Labyrinthos. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so as part of the MSQ, we got the new dungeon, which, by the way, does shake things up a little bit, gang, if you haven't run it yet. As opposed to the three-pool boss, three-pool boss, three-pool boss formula, this one does shake it up a little bit. It's four-pools boss, four-pools boss, four-pools boss. <laughs> so just, just, uh, just a little bit, little different in there for you oh. if you're looking for something spicy. If you want to be more technical, it's two poles, two poles, boss, two poles, two poles, boss, two poles, two poles, boss. Not if when you're running a... it for the first time with the trust system. It's not uh, two I... poles, boss, two poles, boss. <laughs> hey, I, that's what I did. I was like, I trust you, Red. I was healing. I was like, I trust you. What'd you think? You. Best MSQ dungeon yeah, I, I can't even put it down. I, I really enjoyed this. The music was awesome. The, the music, music the for this patch. is hot. Yeah, the, the it entire is, yeah, music across the board is amazing. I just I cannot wait to hear 16's music. Like I just can't uh, at yeah. this point. Uh, you know, so, some might say like, "Well, there's not no real um, original music," and I'm like, "That's fine." The way they pulled, the, you know, the light motifs and layered uh, the previous songs to make something new was just everything just hit um and it was thematic to what was going on in whatever content you were doing so the music for the whole patch was great i loved the bosses um the second boss in the dungeon i'm like 
oh, this is like Titan with like landslides, but it's all lightning based. So yeah, it, you it, got, it was so kind of you fresh. Got, it was purple, <laughs> purple laser bear. Uh, yeah, yeah. laser bear. It was purple great. Laser bear. Uh, and then Octom- Octomammoth. I mean, and I know you had to face him four times, but I was like, this, this is awesome. I love four. And give yeah. me the four battle music. Sweet. Um, I was a little disappointed that we didn't get like as you keep damaging him, maybe he loses a tentacle here and there. Um, probably five. I, and I thought realistically, it was good. I it thought was good. that's what they were going to do too. Yeah, I, because of how the fight starts with all the tentacles coming up mm-hmm. and you know finding the platform that gives you the safe spot and stuff like that. I thought, oh, this is this could be neat. They're going to start with the mechanics being the hardest at the beginning and then taper these tentacle mechanics off and replace them with something, you know, additional attacks that the Octomammoth could have. Uh, they didn't, but I wasn't disappointed by it. I was yeah. just, oh, okay. Uh, I thought the, the bosses were great, like all three yeah. of them. Uh, yeah. Again, I'm never going to come off of, I really think they need to revamp dungeons. It's their biggest opportunity Absolutely. in the game, Absolutely. I think. But I can at least say, hey, you know what? For what dungeons are in Final Fantasy XIV, Flynn, this is a damn good one. It really oh, is yeah. a damn good Very one. Very much on Explorer mode, go and take screenshots dungeon as well. Oh, yeah. The polar Scorpion. bears everywhere right off the bat. Yeah. My wife is like, oh, look, they're clapping. I know. <laughs> clapping. I on my stream, I called them panda bears like for like five minutes. Like, oh, look at all these pandas. It's so cute. And then I realized, wait, they're polar bears. Yeah, these... yeah. <laughs> totally polar bears, different area. Polar bears. <laughs> corrected afterwards. Totally different area. Uh, so then obviously later in MSQ, we hit the trial, which there were no mm-hmm. secrets on this one. It was Golbez True. on the uh, Hellraiser cube uh fighting the battle now this one uh we thought maybe the cube would rotate in some way it does not um Bash. yeah i was Sash. kind of a little disappointed that's a missed opportunity <laughs> golbez is phenomenal i really really enjoyed the fight and the mechanics i oh, will yeah. and the music again incredible but i will mm-hmm. say this Final Fantasy XIV, when it comes to trials and raids, we've spoken often about the camera, right? And how they use the limitations of the camera as a mechanic in and of itself, right? Yes. Forcing you at times to glance left or right, or maybe throw the camera behind you quickly just to see where something may be coming from on some type of mechanic. I don't know what it was about this particular fight. I almost feel like too much of the cube itself is in the camera shot. And Golbez's model was so big, like I actively felt like I was fighting the ca- against the camera uh, at a few different mechanics in this fight. Not that I couldn't eventually see where things were coming from or it was purposely feeling like my vision was obstructed, but it, it felt odd to me where the camera was placed in relationship to the field as far as the most zoom back view you could get. And, and maybe that's like a your mileage may vary thing. Can I? But can, this was can the, I take a guess on what the mechanic was? Go one for of them it. at least. The shadows into gales. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was. It's really tough to to kind of figure out where where I need to go with where the camera was. I, I got there right. You know, it was no yeah, problem. First time through, I found out. A, a yeah, especially it if was, I didn't concentrate for a second to work out which way around uh, cycling was going. Yeah. Uh, but I, I really enjoyed the hell out of the fight. I'll tell you oh, yeah. what, man. The red landscape, the red moon, <laughs> Ooh, I was like, yeah. this is just a... There is nothing fucking here, and this is really cool looking. Like, <laughs> there is absolutely nothing here. But damn, does this look cool. Anyway, Golbez, Flynn, what'd you think? Oh, I really enjoyed the fight. The thing is, I uh, I got a bit of a bias, I think, for doing it on patch day uh yeah. you know got all the people who you know straight away all the ones who really care about the game and want to do the best so went into go bears had a couple of deaths one shot happy days then about an hour and a half ago we opened the buddy out and we wiped three times like holy what's going on <laughs> like because i've done it at least twice now like all the mechanics is like yeah this is sort of brain dead it's normal yeah looking away drink, grabbing the drink it's like why is everyone dead yeah especially when the shadow variants of mechanics yeah people were not clicking on he's cleaving a room there's a massive AOE. don't stand on the boss <laughs> yeah let's uh, not uh let's not do that it was yeah. pretty dope 
It was pretty. Yeah, dumb. yeah. I really enjoyed the more claustrophobic arena as well. Yeah, I don't know if I would say I enjoyed it. I found it awkward <laughs> a little bit at first. Like now, knowing and having done it a few times, it's gonna it, it, it's not gonna matter, and I won't even notice it anymore. It just feels but, refreshing compared to everything else we've had recently. Yeah, I really, I really enjoyed the Fair. fight. Have Have either of you cleared the uh, extreme version? No, I haven't even seen it yet. No. Well, well, I'll be doing that tonight. We wanted to do that with my raid team. Gotcha. Uh, to cool. everyone get weapons for Savage next week. Yeah, so. we can we can bring that next week then, and and talk about the the extreme mode. I'll hopefully it, see a bit how then. it varies. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no problem. Uh, and then we kind of get to the the cliffhanger. Uh, again. Here, I, I'll give you a spoiler warning. Three, two, kind of spoiler warning. One, Zeromus is a thing, and it's not zero. There you go. Like, you saw that coming. If you've, if you've listened to the show for the last three weeks, you knew that we all thought that was coming. It is, which is great. It's fantastic. We don't, we don't get full glimpses of Zeromus. Uh, because there's like the dark cloud swirling all around him. Yeah. Um, but Very what we do see is some some big cloud. ass meaty mitts, man. Some some huge ass meaty mitt hands. Uh, and I can't wait. I can't wait. So now we know. Yeah, that's got to be the trial in six five, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. You see seven now, big. It's gonna be a trial. Yeah, it's gonna be very very cool. So then we get to some of the side stuff in the patch. Uh, you had mentioned Tark Island Sanctuary off the top so uh, of the show, so let's go ahead and start there. We've got new levels, new plots. You can get another workshop. There, there's all kinds of uh, new minions and mounts and new area to explore and send your people to go yeah. get materials from after you open up a big old cave in the mountains. No one predicted yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, no one predicted Wait. cave in the mountains. <laughs> yeah. Uh, actually, Piers and I did. We did a completely patch review, patch notes review on Monday night. And I was like, you know what? The only place they can really go is inside the mountain. So that's what they're doing. Yeah, you can go in the mountain. They called it the yeah. Misty Mountain, which I thought was a cool Lord of the Rings nod. Yeah, it definitely was. So what are you doing on Island Sanctuary? Um, I was not smart and did not prep the whole week before. So I'm still ranked 12. So I am grinding out materials um so you can open at, up the next 10 quest. XP. <laughs> yeah, at 10 xp a pop um and just trying to keep up on on my uh workshop as it as it currently goes Don't it's really important so important now in the future if you want to get a jump start on your island sanctuary in the next patch make sure you have your whole workshop don't collect it just have it you know done for the whole previous week and then collect that XP is yeah important. yeah absolutely important did you get all the mounts and minions? Did you grab them all real quick? I had enough to get everything. So Yeah, yes. so did I. Yeah. And I still <laughs> have plenty good. left over. Not going anywhere. <laughs> How about you and your island, Flynn? I'm almost rank 14, I think. Damn. Dude, I've crazy. done some. Yeah, it was literally what Tark said. I, uh, back last patch, I had got a max rank up. I had prep some work. It's like, yeah, I'm not going to bother touching this. Cell. I don't care about the Mandragora mount. It's fine. So I just left it be for months. Come back in. It's a level up. It worked out for me. <laughs> <laughs> An accidental island sanctuary. Uh, I did up. find out your crops do not grow. <laughs> nope. In between. Nope. They do pause, uh, yeah, which is well, nice. Well, so I managed yeah, to get once, all the XP up that today. Yeah, once you max out the the crop um, that can be stored, um, they won't grow anymore, just like your, nope. your pasture. So. Even if they have seeds, they're gonna sit there until the, it'll care halted, is what they'll mm -hmm. they'll flag all of them. Uh, yeah, I mean it's island sanctuary. It's more it's more of the same with some extra rewards. Like it's nothing exciting, but if you enjoy island sanctuary, there's more of it. There you go. Like okay. there you go. Uh, let's talk about pandemonium. Oh, yes, oh, nine, boy. ten, eleven, and twelve. We got uh, Sheev bro. Uh, Sheev we got. Bro. We got pandemonium. We're gonna go. Oh, we're gonna go fight in pandemonium. No, you're gonna go fight pandemonium, uh, <laughs> like the castle. You're gonna fight yeah. pandemonium. So we got Sheev Bro. We've got pandemonium. We've got Knights into Dreams, and we've got Madam Butterfly. Uh, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. 
uh, circles. Obviously, just the normal mode now. Savage will be next week. And then all the extra stuff, the variant dungeon, Criterion dungeon, Hildebrand, Relic, all that stuff comes in 645. So really, after Pandemonium here, like the only other thing to really talk about is Tataru. But I think nope. that will be worth talking about for a minute when we get there. Uh, so let's start with Pandemonium on a story front. Have, it, have both of you completed? Oh, all yes. Four? Okay. Oh, cool. yeah. I'm very happy. Oh, cool, cool, cool. cool, cool, cool. <laughs> the story, I think, is honestly better than the MSQ. And the MSQ yes. is damn good in this patch. <laughs> mm -hmm. But the Pandemonium story for me uh, was absolutely better than the MSQ. Uh, it is fantastic. Again, great character development. I mean, when I'm watching these scenes after 11 and after 12, and almost feeling bad for different Asians. <laughs> like, I'm like, man, that's good writing. <laughs> that's really, really good writing and fantastic voice acting to, to deliver it all. I called it with a divine comedy as well. Yeah. Oh, 100%. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, nine was definitely the end of Inferno. 10, 11 was Purgatory and 12 was Paradiso. Yep. Very, very nice. Story wise, were you right there with me, Flynn? That this is, oh, this yeah. is probably better than MSQ. Uh, highly. There's actually spoilers There's, in this, so so yeah, let's not talk about let's not talk about the content of the story because yeah. there are actually There's spoilers here. The expansion is pandemonium across the board. Yeah, yeah. That's that's one the one that does it for you. Yeah. What about you, Tark? Yeah, if I put the MSQ at like A minus, uh, this has got to be an A plus. That it was absolutely gripping. I was waiting on every word, and you were right. The voice acting was great. Uh, little twists and turns, like you know who you're gonna fight at the end, but like still the way yeah, it was none of the bosses awesome. are a secret. Yeah, like as soon as you go into either nine, they showed it or you or you're like, yeah. yeah, he's gonna be there. Yeah, as soon as you go into nine. Uh, well, I would say as soon as you go into uh, complete nine and yeah. the boss for 10 spawns in the cut scene, now you know 10 and you also know 11 and 12. Like the, and the entire really smart, thing. You know, yeah, exactly. Yeah, the entire thing is laid out for you right there. Uh, but even knowing that in advance, not disappointed. It felt What's like a narrative weave into it. Yeah, well. it was really, really well done. Really well done. And, and my boy La Habrea, man. Just like there were moments where like just that thousand yard stare where he's just like, you're like, fuck, I know what mm. you become. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, and oh, my God, now, you know, too, like, oh, man, oh, I'm shedding a tear for for Asians. What's your favorite fight, Flynn, mechanically speaking, though, Ooh. out of the four? 10 oh. or 12. I can't decide between those two. Why those like, two? 410 is uh, the arena feels so unique, but 12 mm. is such a beautiful fight, and especially the arena. The way they use that, you can see why things increase to 30 arms in that arena. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, they have to. They have oh, to. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, such a beautiful fight. The uh, way, especially that song, uh, P12 song, way it brings in uh, moments of scream. Yep. Scream yeah, and P4. Just, scream yeah. and P4. Screaming embers. Oh, so well done. Tark, your favorite? Oh my god, that's so hard to decide. Um I'm gonna have to probably go with eleven. Um To the Edge is one of my favorite songs from Shadowbringers. Uh so to have that remix and, and layered uh brought some nostalgia feels. Uh, it also has uh, some thematic mechanics of like Thancred from uh, E11. I thought it was just well done, and I'm ex super excited to see what they do with that in Savage. It, it, and, and the arena itself, the arena itself. I don't know if you're like paid attention, but that's that's the whole of the 14. That was I was like, oh my god, I know where we're at. That was awesome. So yes, um, this whole tier though, uh, top notch. Top to bottom, music, yeah. mechanics, everything was great. All, all and four of them, all, all four of them are really well done. I got to give it to ten. Uh, I I really enjoyed ten's mechanics a little bit, and I know to Cal and Chat not so much with the web tethers. Uh, I like the web tether mechanic myself. 
I liked that if you failed the mechanic, then teammates could bail you out uh, by by breaking the tether themselves. Like I like those things that aren't just dodge the damage. Here comes the damage. Were you in the damage? No. Cool. Move on. I I like those kind of. I you you have to do extra things or. Um, if you fail to do something, it's not necessarily you're going to take 50% damage and get a Vuln Up buff uh, It's or debuff. It's going to be, you know, uh, limiting in some other way, and in this case, movement. And then, obviously, there is a stacking debuff that, that goes with it, too. But you could be bailed out by friends. In, in I just like those interactive things like that. Yeah. Visually, the fight is very, very cool. I loved just the boss design across the mm-hmm. board not just in pandemonium but in the uh in the dungeon as well yeah. uh the bosses and the mobs just the trash mobs like those rainbow golems those were really cool looking those those monsters oh, were yeah. really really cool <laughs> the ones from someone Trash hasn't done a mo- as well aren't they <laughs> yeah someone hasn't done a lot of excitatron oh, oh yeah 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 no i've i've done it i just like those models yeah, they're very okay. very okay. cool Okay. Yeah, so it's it's all very very well done, and Pandemonium is the top of the list for me. Uh, Tark, you're way behind on Tatara. You like don't even do that, huh? I have said I did the first one after I realized it was one quest at a time. This one, this one throws this little curveball. It's two quests. Okay, it's three. It's two quests. It's three. Oh my god. Okay. Oh no, you're That's right. You're crazy. right. It's two. You're you're. It's two. It's, it's two. two. Okay. Yeah. It's two. I'm That's a little behind as well. That's what I got from the part, patch quest. It was just two. Um, but yeah, until it's all done in 6.5, I, I'm not, I'm not touching. I want to do, I'll do it all in one go. Um, I kind of feel like it's going to be a, you know, see the, see the sights of the world where you've been and kind of, you know, clap along as you reminisce. Yeah, kind of, they did this with uh, Heaven's Word where you went through all the zones and, and, uh, met everyone that you went along in your travels. This is just kind of a whole, uh, Final Fantasy 14 extravaganza with just like one or two quests. So uh, until the end, that's when I'll do it, but not until then. Just- um, the, so there's you get back in the sky on what the the G diver or whatever it is. Sure. Um, G savior, isn't it? Yeah, whatever, savior. whatever they call it in this one, right? In 14, I can't remember. It was so long ago that I did that. Like when they told me to go here in the quest, I was like, where the f- is that? Oh, oh, I got to go talk to the cart guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And have him take me there. <coughs> and then they queue up and, yeah, G Warrior. They explain um, basically a mini game, like a, almost a rhythm mini game where they're like, hey, we got this icon. And it's very Legend of Dragoon. When the big circle gets on the small or this big square gets on the small square, hit uh, hit your mouse key. And then we have this colored one. Where if that pops up, just keep tapping your mouse key until it goes away. And I'm like, okay, fine, fairly easy little mini game, but let's do it. Uh, finally, something in here that isn't just go talk to somebody and hand them something. <laughs> it was all of 30 seconds long. <laughs> like, the cutscene is awesome. Like if you want to see a, a huge Godzilla style uh, air battle uh, with lightsabers, it's a great cutscene in there. Uh, oh, but well. don't don't like the kaiju it, stuff. It took me lo- yeah, it was very kaiju. It it took me longer to read the directions for the mini game than to actually do the little mini game <laughs> thing. So I was like, okay, fine, whatever. That's hilarious. Um, yeah, I was like, okay, read this, read this, read this. Fade to black. Color up. Here we go. Click 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 click. And whoa, cutscene. Okay, <laughs> so. Let's just watch this cool ass cutscene of these two big ass things fight, and I don't do anything about it. I don't know. Not a fan. Not a fan. <sighs> Patch as a whole, one through ten, Tark, so far. Just the four part. Obviously, we have the additional stuff coming in four or five. We'll rate that okay. by itself later. Just this stuff. And without the savage. Uh so with what we got, uh, I, I've got to give it a ten. Like it's it was all around perfect for me. It hit all the right nostalgia beats for me. The music again, just killer all around. Like if they could just pa- uh, bundle this patch in a soundtrack, I might actually buy just this. Um, yeah, ten. I, that's it's great. Flynn, take it. Yeah, definitely a ten. I think it also because 
without going back into spoilers for Pandy, it feels like we've had a patch that culminates a story that connects to us as a human rather than just our Yola champion of light. It feels yeah. like we've actually been really rooted in a story that's not uh, MacGuffin. Yeah, it's got to be a 10. I'm going to give it a 9, but only because I still think they can do more with dungeons, and until they do... I'm gonna I'm gonna dock that on scores a little bit, and I I think that's fair. Not that I didn't. Well, never like, be a just ten like, patch ever again. Just, just like the previous patches, I've enjoyed the dungeon. Uh, it's pretty. I like the bosses, uh, but I want to see them execute a little more on the variant criterion dungeons. And if that had been in this patch, I probably Tark would have given it the given it a ten. If it yeah. if I didn't have to wait till four or five for the variant and criterion dungeons. I probably would give this a 10. But because I've just got the one dungeon in there, it does follow the familiar stale formula, as cool as the boss fights may be. I'm going to give it a 9. You know what? I'll give it a 9.5. I'm, I'm only going to take okay. half a point for that because I okay. know I'm getting a variant and criterion dungeon. Damn near perfect. I agree, gentlemen. It is, the, in my opinion, the best patch of the 6.1 and beyond series. Um, well done. Well done. I, I want to say, you know, we brought so four up, five um, is next week, right? Like it, it's next week. Next <laughs> yeah. No, just tomorrow, next right? Eight <laughs> weeks, six to eight weeks. Um, Takao you know, we giving it an the... eight does not like the tenth circle fight. Yeah, the oh, very, don't like the very Alexander esque fight. Proto Alexander. <laughs> um. All right. Let's so let's talk about some other Square Enix news. We'll stick with Yoshi P though as we segue from 14 into additional stuff. We've seen Yoshi P uh, hint at this or talk about this before, but be apparently because it was now in an interview, a new interview with GQ uh, magazine, uh, now everybody's covering it again. But this isn't new. He has said similar things, if not this direct, before. Um, specifically in the past, he's been talking, Tark, if you remember, about some point in time, Final Fantasy XIV can't be called Final Fantasy XIV, right? Because sure. it does, it won't, there will come a time when it doesn't make sense. Sure. Um, you know, when, when we're on 20, who's going to want to go play quote unquote 14? So he's had these ideas before. So he talked to GQ Magazine and he said, um, you know, a lot of players are going to come in and they're going to look at it like a comic book uh, where you have to read from the beginning to know what's going on now. It's hard for marketing, talking about marketing Final Fantasy games, mainline titles that keep including numbers. Because every numbered title that we release in the series, we have to go into it like, it's okay, you don't have to play the rest of them. That's actually I've something I've discussed with the higher-ups. Maybe it's about time we remove the numbers from the title. For example, you have Final Fantasy XIV. You get a new single player coming in, and it's like, wait a minute. Why do I have to play Final Fantasy XIV if sixteen is out? Why don't we just call it Final Fantasy Online? Just get rid of the number altogether, and that'll make it easier to understand. Whether Final Fantasy XVII or Final Fantasy XVIII should have a number or not, that's going to be on whoever has to develop that game and whoever's in charge of the branding. So that's their problem, not ours. Kind of hinting once again that you know maybe Final Fantasy should just ditch the whole numbering and start subtitling things, right? As a sidebar oh. here, Final Fantasy trading card game literally did this four or five sets ago. The sets were always called Opus One, Opus Two, yep. Opus Three, Opus Four, Opus Five. When we got to ten, they started putting a subtitle on it, so it would be you know Opus One, Lords of Chaos, or whatever. I, you know, Opus Ten, Lords of Lords and Chaos, or uh, stuff like the latest one is From Nightmares. But they stopped putting the Opus numbers in front of them, and they've just been using for the last five or six sets the subtitle. So now, although we on the show have you know, uh, colloquially referred to it as Opus 19, they officially don't view it as Opus 19. They, they just say, from nightmares. When it comes to mainline Final Fantasy titles, though, uh, Tark, taking the numbers away or not? No. No, why? No, uh, his point about, oh, we have to always tell them you don't have to play. Yeah, that's been a thing that you've had to do for 35 years, just... 
deal with it. It's now part of tradition. You also have all these spinoffs, Final Fantasy, Four Lords of Light, and other various stuff, uh, Strangers of Paradise. Um, I, I think it's good to have side stuff. I, I think it's good to have a, the ma a mainline series, and you dot it, and you just deal with the whole... You don't have to play the previous. You've been dealing with that for 35 years. You, it just... It's fine. And, and I, I just like having a, a separation of... And maybe this is where the lines are blurring because they're getting away from the turn-based. Um, oh, I, I'm so conflicted on this. See, I'm not conflicted at all. I think this is dumb. Like, honestly, I, 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 just, I could I not disagree with Yoshi P more. And I don't, I don't even like his reason for this. His reason is the whole, hey, we have to market it as, no, you don't have to play all the rest of them. Uh, one, I think people already know that. And even if you do have to market it that way or you feel you do, you have also been reaping the benefits on the marketing side of every time a Final Fantasy title is going to be released, when it has that number in it, it's a mainline Final Fantasy yeah. title. It yeah. is not a side story. It is not a side strategy game. It is not this little mobile game. You have a hundred different products that aren't mainline titles that you have put the Final Fantasy name on, and every time you come back and you say, hey, we're working on a Final Fantasy, the big first reveal is, is it a mainline title or not? Yeah. And you have capitalized on that. You then don't also get to say, well, you know, we're constantly having to remind people you don't have to play the rest of them. You're taking Ooh. advantage of the number being there when it suits you <laughs> to me. Uh, and, and I think you do need to do that. If Final Fantasy had just been the mainline games, then I would probably agree at this point. We're at 16. Let's go ahead and drop the numbers and start calling them, you know, Final Fantasy X and Final Fantasy Y and Final Fantasy Z going forward. Fine, I get it. But because there's so many, to me, there's so many side games that bear the Final Fantasy name and you like being able to market a mainline title... Well, those numbers are what tells your fan base this is a mainline title and this one is not. What do you think, Flynn? Oh, yeah, I completely agree. Tradition is there for a reason. It's like uh, a comparison uh, to Marvel bloody universe. You can't compare a reveal of, right, we call Echo, the TV show coming out, to like a standalone Daredevil movie. They're completely separate worlds. Like, uh, if we had never had a side series then something like the yakuza studios uh, in uh, games in japan you have the riga kotoku games then you have ryu well that's uh, a bad kotoku, example because they are totally Gaiden. renaming that series yeah. now well, that's what I'm saying, <laughs> Japanese name, they've always had it ryuga kotoku uh, right. like a dragon for the main series then they had uh, that name gaiden for anything that was a spin-off yep so they had a way to differentiate between what is core and not core but right. <laughs> I think we're like all on the I same page the, here. Just, yeah, yeah, I said behind the scenes, it's like if it was a case of uh, uh, exactly. uh, whatever, a Final Fantasy story to di differentiate the main series game or something, it could work, but as Final Fantasy game, it's, we're stuck in tradition. Press getting some hands-on time this past week with Final Fantasy sixteen once again. Remember, about a month or so ago, Press was invited out, and they were given like a, a vertical slice to play. It was a very specific. They said, hey, this is a few hours in. We've also overleveled the character a little bit, so you'll have more abilities than you will at this point in the story when you play the retail release. I'm showing Press Square's footage, so uh, credit to that team here. It really doesn't matter what B-roll I show you here. Everybody's B-roll is the same uh, because this is not them capturing gameplay. They were yeah. not allowed they're to not, capture not allowed. gameplay. They were given B-roll footage to use to make videos. So while you may see creative cuts and jump cuts and dissolves leading from one thing to another differently between videos, the footage you're actually seeing is, is the same for whatever press outlet you are watching. I made my rounds, gents, and kind of was getting everybody's opinions, and I kept hearing kind of the same things. What they got to play was essentially the first four hours of the game, but there were some slight modifications made to this compared to the retail release. 
so that they could get right into certain stages and right into certain more open areas. Because remember, this is not open world, but they mm -hmm. have said the areas are going to give you freedom to explore and do side quests and stuff like that. Yeah, it's kind of like uh, 14 zones, right? You're just yeah. bigger chunks. Yeah. I, I kind of keep hearing the same thing. Most of the press outlets I've seen still really enjoy the combat, but find the combat at the beginning of the game for these first few hours maybe a bit stale because you, they didn't feel like they were acquiring new abilities to mess around with uh, at, at, a, at a nice pace. And so things turned into a two-button mash timing thing for fight after fight after fight. Obviously, we would expect that that's something that would get better the further, and most of the outlets said the same, that would get better as you go through the game because when they did the press thing a, a month or so ago, they said the exact opposite. We almost had too many abilities to kind of figure out in the time we had what to do. The politics of the story get a little muddled at first because they don't have the follow-up follow-through on a lot of things. So... I think the first few hours might actually be a little rocky for some longtime Final Fantasy fans. Um, I'm down because I like a good political intrigue story. I'll learn the players over time. I did like one of the tools they showed off where kind of you can interact with a menu while you're talking to somebody and it'll give you information, more information about that person uh, and things like that, just in case you do need those refreshers of who's related to who, and obviously some of the huge fights right off the bat of the game really do set the tone. Lots of press liked the fact that it was like big fight after big fight after big fight. When you made the rounds, Tark, what were you thinking about some of the, the things you were seeing and hearing here as we are literally weeks away from release? Yeah, less than a month, right? Yeah, the 22nd, oh, yeah. so yeah. Um, I'm super excited. I can't wait for my box to get in and do an unboxing. Can't wait to play it hardcore for till my hair falls out. Oh wait, as already has. Um, everything that I wanted, um, that and Yoshi P's stance that you know they're really focusing on the story. Um, and he talked about another article where you know 15s was incomplete or disjointed. Um, they didn't want to do that again. Yeah. So to have a complete story. Not to mention the whole 15 thing where, you know, you had to go through five different types of media to get a bunch of story. This is seems to be and even then contained. it wasn't all yeah. joined correctly. Like yeah. you watch King's Glaive and King's Dead. You you start the game, which supposedly happens after King's Glaive, King's Alive. You're yeah, like, wait a minute. Before, but <laughs> then okay, chapter yeah. one, watch yeah. film. <laughs> continue chapter one exactly yeah you have to like do a break in chapter one to put the king's glaive film in there correctly <laughs> so weird um so it's the fact that it seems to be all contained um they've really focused on making sure they're presenting a whole story um i like because they're they're going into a full real-time combat really for the first time I, I, I'm like that they're doing a slow pace kind of tutorial wise, adding a little bit here, get used to it and then add another phase to it, get used to it kind of feels how, if you started a new character in 14 now kind of feels that way, you know, you're getting one ability and you're going to be with that one or two abilities for a few levels. And then you're going to get another ability Might change things up. So, Oh um, yeah. I, I've bemoaned to friends who have started. I've been like, I, I get it. Black mage is horrid to start yeah. with it's yeah. absolutely horrid to start with you'll yeah. be fine just get through it yeah. Yeah. just get through it um so i'm hopeful that the story is enough for people to get through the combat portions um until they it really starts to flesh out and then when you are going out into side areas and doing side quests and stuff so i'm very encouraged by the direction that they're headed with all this it looks great flynn i keep hearing a common thing across the board i want your take on it this could be a game of the year content. I mean, people were already shouting that this was going to be a game yeah. of the year contender as soon as they knew. It was like, whatever year it comes out, it's going to be a game of the year contender. Now that we know it's a, a, th a, a for sure thing. But I'm now hearing that in, and it's easy to say when you know 16's in development and you have no idea when it's yeah. going to come out, right? But now that we've seen some gameplay, we've seen some footage, people are getting hands-on and although they, they aren't, 
able to show their footage. In particular, they are able to speak to the limited access they have had, including Mr. Happy, who got hands on time. And again, he was like, the music, you're just not ready for it. Like, he was just like, if you think you know Sokin's music, you don't. You're not ready for this. Um, yeah, before I give is this a answer, game of the year contender? Uh, I think so, but I think it's also going to be a, a lot more criticized by the fan base compared to Zelda. How, oh, are you talking mm. about like the whole, it, it's not exactly what was in the past type deal? Yeah, a lot of that. And a lot of us, especially 14 players who know the writing team that's involved in this, we're going to want something to a such a high degree that I'm so glad you focus on story first, story before action, and I'm hopeful. So I mean, like like Tark said, Yoshi P did an entire interview about it, where it was just story, or a story, that's our focus, it's all self-contained, you get the disc, go install it, it's the whole story, beginning to end, story, 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 and he stressed how he would love to just be there to see some see players watch for the first time the ending cutscene and watch the credits, and have it end and see what their reaction is at that point. Oh, yeah. Right, I love uh, a William Miss Happy interview just uh, when they're talking about, because we've been on about the combat. And you see, uh, he asked uh, uh, Koji Fox and uh, Yoshi, he's like, oh, what's your favorite abilities? And they're saying, well, it, everyone has a certain style that they enjoy because it's basically our job system, is our icon abilities. And it's just like, yeah, we got uh, someone preferred Shiva because it was a lunge into the combat. You get in there, you just get an aggro build. Uh, some love the Phoenix style just because of the shift abilities to knock people up in the air. It's, it's going to be something that everyone's going to find a play style that they'll enjoy and they'll really gel with. They'll build their character to do some crazy things that make them super excited. It's going to be interesting, and if you're wondering why it's on PlayStation 5 still for some reason, and you needed confirmation, uh, it's because Sony paid them more. Like, it's... No, it's, no. It's that simple. Yes, yes. It's because the power of the PS5. No. Come on. No. I reckon it is no. a small, tiny bit of that cause no. of other no. developers no. stating certain no. things about no. Xbox no. development. No, no, no. Final Fantasy being one of Square Enix's very important yeah. franchises oh, yeah. up we there with the Dragon Quest and Kingdom Hearts series. When we do begin development, we do approach multiple platforms, multiple companies about releasing the game. And when you approach them, they're going to come back to us with their offers. The team in Square Enix then consider all those offers and decide which is the best for the project. And in this case, Square Enix like PlayStation's offer best. And it didn't hurt that these two companies have a long-time relationship anyway. Uh, from Yoshi P's perspective, he said, hey, that said, from a developer and a programming uh, programmer perspective, limiting develop to any single system, yes. not specifically uh, PlayStation, yep. makes it not only easier on us, but also allows us the ability to optimize it. And that allows us the ability to maximize performance for that one system because we're only concentrating on that system. It allows us to create the game that we want to create, and it makes it easier for us to do that. This from an interview in Game Informer. And they also uh, had some additional details to say, hey, we are not planning a day one patch. We believe the game is done. Um, if we're still, you know, it's gone gold, right? And it, but yeah. if oh, we like continue. Gold like a month ago. So, yeah. yeah. If we f we're continuing to test, and if we find any major bugs, then obviously we may change that and issue a day one patch. But as of this moment, there is no day one patch planned for Final Fantasy 16. That's the confidence level in the product right now, which honestly, as a Final Fantasy fan, feels great to hear. Yeah. But as honestly, fan. as a gamer, yeah, exactly, gamer. Tark. Yes. It's just like, hey, we are that confident. Right now, no day one patch planned, but we're still testing. And if there's something super broken that we missed, then yeah, we'll go ahead and do a day one patch. But right now, it's not in the cards. We're not planning one. I felt like this might have been the case with CBU3. Their track record across the board for being on time, getting things working. I mean, just refresh P's. Yeah. Yoshi P's whole organization structure yeah. ever since he joined 14 has been uh, spot on. So, yeah, there's a hiccup yep. here and there, but it's been fine. Yesterday, we got a new trailer for the game, too. 
uh, for Final Fantasy 16 from the PlayStation Showcase, the <laughs> Salvation trailer. So learning a bit more about some of the relationships. Uh, the trailer, you know, if you haven't seen it yet, go watch it. It's a baller trailer. Like, again, I can't say enough. The 16 trailers have all been good. Um, they've just been, you know, what they do. Wow. But also from the uh, PlayStation Showcase, Square Enix announces Foam Stars. So if you have been waiting for that Splatoon <laughs> clone baby from Square Enix, here it is. It's Splatoon with foam and maybe some more environmental interaction with the foam because it's foam and not ink, but it's Splatoon. Tark, you a, are you a foam star, baby? <laughs> um, at first, I was I was wondering what the hell this was as we, as we were watching it. It's like, this is square. I'm like, what the hell is this? This is just so weird. And then it dawned on me, this is, this is Splatoon just with foam and the and the title foam stars they might need to rethink that i think it's a little too close to porn stars man they <laughs> they trademarked that hey, title parties, back in you know? january yeah that was back uh, in january yeah this is so not for me you don't want to be a foam star i'm, I'm thinking I, I just this put this right next to power wash simulator for me <laughs> just Speaking of, Power Watch Simulator no. uh, has a collaboration with Warhammer now oh, coming up. Yeah, I'm ready to clean the unclean one. <laughs> and SpongeBob. And SpongeBob. And SpongeBob. Oh, yeah. Well, Bikini what, Bottom could use the scrubbing. Into it, but cleaning the God Scorpion and seeing all the little tiny details on that character model. Oh, so good. Flynn, are you a foam it. star? Uh, maybe. Have you ever really? enjoyed Splatoon? I might give it a go. <laughs> I wouldn't put money on it, but if it was uh, free to play on something, I'd try it out. <laughs> it's like, if it comes free with a copy of Forspoken, I'll play Fox Stars. <laughs> hey, let's I'll slide over. Forspoken, man. Let's that slide over and do Love It or Leave It. Love it or leave it is the way we end every episode of the Relic Grind here. It's where I give you something Square Enix related. Could be a game, a feature, something they did or said in a press release. And you tell me whether you love it, want more of it, or leave it, never see it again. No offense sitting here. Now, obviously, guys, giving you 6.4 as a patch. I felt going into it that all three of us were going to feel the same. We do. That would have been super easy. It would have been love it, love it, love it. And then I was thinking about the whole ditching Final Fantasy numbers as being the love it or leave it. And I was like, I think that's going to be too easy too. Everybody's going to yeah. be a leave it, leave it, leave it. Yeah. Now, see, here's the thing. That's all I put in the show notes. So now both of these guys are like, what the hell is he about to give us <laughs> for love it or leave it? <laughs> because simulator. Leave it. literally leave it. I said <laughs> it'd be six, four would be easy. So what do you think of the numbering going away? Um, no, I'm going to give you foam stars. You got to decide right now, right. and let's put it. Let's put it at like a twenty. I don't know if this will be true or anywhere near it, but let's put it. Let, let's say it was a twenty-five dollar video game, no microtransactions, just a twenty-five dollar Splatoon type game with foam. Love it or leave it, Flynn. Because obviously, I think you put this at sixty or seventy dollars, and you just all of us leave it yeah. right away. So I'm I making think, it a little wow. more reasonable. I think just to give it some positive, I'll give it a love it. Just because it's. We need something you, you have fun with life. the kids with Splatoon? No, I've never played Splatoon, but I, I've heard people have fun with the game. People enjoy it. A few other friends of mine have played it. It's like, yeah, you know, I'll polish it up a little. Check it on different platforms. Oh. You'll foam it up. What about you, Tark? We got one love it. What about you? Chat. I, Even I if was, it's free to play, uh, leave it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, now that um, Flynn brought that up, like, now I'm like, because my big hang i was like who would i play this with and i'm like would i play with the ready tech radio boys would no, we you would play with your down kids. weekly and then yeah he brought that up. i'm like oh yeah i have kids that i could play <laughs> with like every other weekend and we could play foam stars and then you know my little girl could you know mispronounce the word and tell her mom that we're playing porn stars you know uh over the weekend so that oh i great. don't think the name's um, that bad no it's not called Horn Stars. Then, then yeah, I'd have to be like, yeah, okay, what are you guys doing? Um, $25 maybe. 
you know, as a, like a Christmas gift. Hey, kids, we're going to play this and we'll have fun. And maybe. So, uh, you can't do maybe. Guess... It's love it or leave it, bro. Uh, all right. I could see a point where this could be a thing at $25. $25, I'd say love it. You're both out of your fucking minds. Leave this. Throw it away. Even and I agree. If in fact, I'd be more inclined to pay uh, twenty five dollars to play it than to try it as free to play because Square Enix is just horrid at free to play monetization. Yeah, there. The game would only last fourteen months, guaranteed. It may not last that long to begin with. Don't get me wrong. But you guys are out of your damn minds pulling these excuses to love it out of your butts. This I know, is that's leave it one hundred percent. We have to bring a bit of uh, excitement to the end of the show for one percent of all of us <laughs> loving it, all of us hating. Something. Hey man, like we had forty-five straight minutes of just gushing over six point exactly. four. We were yeah. all very happy today. We were all happy. Final Fantasy Square Enix campers. A little bit of fun with foam stars. I don't know. Let us know how you feel about it in the comments. We'll be back next Thursday with another episode of The Relic Grind. Remember, no gaming gumbo uh, this weekend. I'll be in Ontario at a Final Fantasy trading card game tournament trying to still qualify for the North American Championships. Until next Thursday, though, Flynn, where can everybody find you? You can find me Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday next week. Back to normal streams uh, on uh, Twitch at Within Crisis. You'll find me, obviously, next Thursday. Hopefully more awake because I won't be crafting for hours and hours and hours on end. <laughs> And yeah, that's me. Tark. Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, all at Tarkov Gaming. You can find me trying to uh, locate that crystal that was dropped uh, by Zero in her engagement with Zeromus. I think that crystal is going to be important. Uh, then you can also find me here on Ready Check Radio uh, playing Final Fantasy 15 as we dive into Chapter 8. We're moving along. I'm Mike Byrne. You can follow me right there personally at Magic Man 1, but more importantly, follow at RC Radio, R A I D E O right on Twitter, and you'll know every time we go live with a podcast, stream, or we're just hanging out, playing games, or chatting, you're welcome to join us. Until next time, gang, stay safe. We'll see you on the servers. Later. Later.